people always ask me, they'll say, uh, well, why'd you change the name? But then, well, say, I throw an amplicon to say we could have if you still have that. That's a great question. We get the name all the time, and no, we are not a Vegas-based organization. If I tell you software that, that can help map the entire uh, land area that we're looking at to basically look and see where the issues may be quicker, faster, and safer. This is the Oil & Gas Contractors Connect podcast. With your host, Ryan Ray. Welcome to the Oil and Gas Contractors Connect podcast. As always, Ryan Ray here in the host seat. So good to have you on this episode where today we have a special guest. We'll get to it in a second. But first, let's thank our sponsor, who is again R Squared Global. If you are interested in engineering, surveying, anything along those lines, right away, GIS, go to, go to GoR2.com and check them out. Um, if you're the first time tuning into this show, this is the show where we connect you with all parts of the oil and gas business, upstream, midstream, downstream, wherever you're at, we bring on the folks who are working in various parts of the industry so you can meet them right here. Today we have on James Durbin, who is the owner, president, big dog over at the Oilfield Photography Incorporated. You can find out more about the Oilfield Photography people by going to the Oilfield Photography the oilfield photographer, sorry, the oilfield photographer dot com. We will link to that in the show notes, so you can just click it right there. James, so good to have you on the show today. How are you doing? Fantastic. Thank you for the invitation. All right. Well, let's kind of get into it. The name seems self explanatory. Uh, the oilfield photographer. Um, what exactly is it? Just photography, or is it photography video? Kind of walk us through thirty thousand feet. What you guys do over there? Uh, be happy to. And yeah, I mean, it, it is pretty self-explanatory, but just like anything else in this uh, industry, you know, there's always a little more to it. So, uh, basically what we do is, is we specialize in the production of visual marketing material for oil and gas operators. Um, so that includes their advertising material, their internal communications, their, uh, brochures, their inventory, if they have a visual inventory, um, just all manner of things, but basically we, we do specialize in going into the field, uh, working on the equipment with the equipment that operators are using and documenting it in a manner uh, that it's visually exciting. One of the things that um, has struck me about your, your work is, is, as you said, that you're out there, you're on the on the rigs, and um, just without, obviously we don't want to talk about clients and specific contractual details, but help me understand you know, how hard was this in the beginning to sell to operators and say, hey, we want to come out there because um, there's obviously a, a liability risk on their side. So how was that process of convincing folks that, you know what, this is something we want we want to do and we want to do it on your rig? Will you let us do that? Right. So actually, I haven't really had to convince very many people at all. They are uh, seeking me out, seeking out our company wow. um, and calling me because uh, all of these companies need uh, marketing material they need good visual production of what they're doing and um, they're uh, quickly finding out that uh, asking employees to do it with iPhones while they're you know happen to be doing two or three other things is not getting them the the product that they that they desire so I haven't really had to convince anyone um, people people find me because uh, there's not many people doing what we do and, uh, you know, of course, we have fantastic uh, liability insurance and equipment coverage and all of that, just so uh, we are covered um, in the event of any kind of accident. But, but you know, basically, they're, they are inviting us out there. We have PPE. We are comfortable working in that environment. And we also ensure that anybody we're uh, pointing a camera at is also uh, acting in a safe manner and, and uh, conforming to PPE standards. Well, you know, that's exactly where I was going next is that there is probably some ancillary benefits to this because if you are going to go out there and someone's going to let you on their, their site, um, no matter what kind of safety record they have historically, they're going to want to check and make sure they're in compliance. So uh, not only do you bring a value for marketing, it probably also has some ancillary benefits on safety because then everyone has to make sure, you know what, we're about to tech capture a photo here. Everything's got to be safe, which is obviously good for the employees and, and you know people like yourself as well. But um, it's kind of a side benefit to, to having someone out there photograph, uh, take photographs is that everyone's got to be safe. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's exactly right. And we like to... Um 
you know, say that everyone's uh, at that level of safety all the time, but uh, things happen sometimes. And, and uh, we do make sure that if a company has us out there, they know that, uh, that everything's going to be on the up and up. So what gave you the idea to you know open this business and, um, you know, what was kind of the inspiration for this? Because you mentioned a minute ago that it's obviously it's hard um, and probably not the safest thing is to have someone with their camera to take a picture of the of the rig and be doing two or three jobs. So what, what kind of – do you have a background working on rigs or what kind of motivated you to do this? I have I have no background prior to this in oil and gas at all. My background is actually in photojournalism. It's in uh, um, storytelling, visual storytelling, and I think that's something that um, – oil and gas operators actually came to, to, to pick out, uh, pick me out because my photos are not just, uh, well, pedestrian. They're very, uh, documentary, very colorful, very iconic. And, uh, the people that work for me, um, I train them to produce in that same manner. I, I employ other, uh, photojournalists, the people with that background or people who just have a good eye. Um, and, and, we kind of attack everything with that same standard of just telling a story and every company has a story to tell um, whether whatever product they have out there or whatever their employees do that's different than everybody else. It's, it's all about telling that, that message. And so um, that, you know, that's what my background is in, but, but um, I, I basically started to get contacted by oil and gas companies because of my, uh, my name getting out there being in local newspapers and, and different publications around uh, the country uh, just for my photojournalism work, documenting uh, events and uh, sports and things like that. People, people started asking me, Hey, you know, can you come out on our location and shoot this? And uh, you know, I got a FR suit and um, you know, and a hard hat and I started doing it and then it just snowballed uh, over the last few years into, into what it's now become. So I've been in the industry since 2005, um, and it's kind of hard for me to talk about other industries because I, I don't really know them that well. I mean, I know the people in oil and gas because I've that's kind of most of my life I've been working this. Coming as an outsider's perspective on some level that, that, that worked in other industries and then came into oil and gas, I'm curious, what are your thoughts on what what is what might be unique um, about oil and gas compared to other industries or what might be a lot of similarities that maybe because we're not exposed to um, never someone like myself in your main working career has been in oil and gas. You, you're not really familiar with other industries. So as someone who's got kind of a broad range, I am curious um, uh, in your experience, what, what are some similarities and differences you've seen? Well, um, when it comes to industry photography, I'd say my experience is, is definitely focused around oil and gas. Um, so, you know, I can't say that I've documented in this level of detail or worked with this many different companies in, in other industries. Mm. But uh, what I what I do see uh, is a is a tremendous focus of oil and gas. Is a couple of things. One would be one would be safety, and the second is just um, is a pride of of what these companies and what these employees are doing. I think everybody has a tremendous vested interest in the economic energy independence of our country. And they take that to heart when they go to work. And I think that's part of why I enjoy photographing this industry so much is because um, it's not just a job to people. Um, it's There's definitely easier jobs uh, out there. I think people um, really believe in what they're doing if they're in this, in this business. And uh, it's pretty cool to see. Yeah, it, it is. And it's good to see someone who is kind of bringing, we always joke at the oil and gas industry that we're, we're kind of behind the eight ball on, uh, or behind the curve rather on, on, um, you know, getting affluent on social media and, 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 and technology, stuff like that. So what you're doing is kind of a, a value add because it's, you're doing it and looking at some of your pictures on the old field photographer.com here. They're, they're really well shot. Um, you mentioned marketing material uh, a few minutes ago. Um, I, I, I'm curious from taking kind of the wide range of photos you have here. Have you noticed that the industry responds better to, um, I see you've got some pictures that are at night, some pictures that are day, some pictures that are shot probably at dawn or dusk. Um, some have rigs, some don't. I'm just curious. Have you seen, um, from an industry standpoint, 
a marketing standpoint, um, some of our listeners might be going, you know what, we, we would like this kind of service. Um, is there a, a preference on what, what's in the photo? Well, uh, generally they, they leave that to me um, mm -hmm. because okay. that's sort of my area of expertise is how and when to make this situation um, look good. Now, sometimes we're limited. I mean, people work when they work or shifts happen when they happen, or if you've ever been out on a, on a rig site, uh, stuff shows up when it shows up or it doesn't show up when it's supposed to show up. And so, um, you know, we have to, we have to always kind of be flexible, but if I can help it, I will try and use things like sunrise, sunset, um, you know, different kind of natural light or different sort of, um, environmental, additions to to really make the the imagery different um now working in the permian basin there's often not a lot of pretty stuff around so it's definitely a challenge um and in some ways the the ugliness is uh can be beautiful if you know how to work it to your advantage it's rugged and mm -hmm. um and people people like that because they want to see that their equipment and their and their employees can function in this rugged environment and be productive. Yeah, you mentioned the Permian uh, for the listeners who might not be in the Permian, maybe in the Eagle for Scoop Stack or up in the Balkan, um, even over to the Marcellus of Utica. Do you guys cover just the Permian exclusively or are you across the U.S.? We are based out of the Permian Basin in Midland. And I have enough business here from operators that are based around the country, but that have interests in the Permian to stay extremely busy. Now we do travel um, we have gone different places and, you know, some companies have different pieces of equipment in different parts of the country, uh, Pennsylvania or, or even different, different parts of different fields within Texas. So, I mean, we, we do travel and we can work it into our schedule. Um, but the Permian Basin is certainly busy enough that, uh, we have plenty to do here. Let me see here. The one of the things I've asked all the guests so far, I think, and I'm gonna try to figure out how to word this in a way that will work for what you're doing, but we'll see if I can do it. We've talked about with other guests is setting expectations or, um, you know, kind of prepping the client for success. Um, so your business is a little bit different. You're, you're taking, um, you know, photographs, but there's still a process there. So how do you go about advising a client or if one of our clients, uh, one of our listeners is, you know, going, you know what, I want to bring these guys out and get some photos taken. What are some of the things that you like to set up front and say, you know what, Hey, if we don't take care of this now down the road, this could cause a problem for what we're doing here. Do you have some insights on, um, you know, how to, how to, how, how you go about that process? Well, we're always successful in our, in our mission, which is to, to provide material that companies can be, can use and be proud of, of the equipment that they have or the people and whether that's photo, video, um, drone, you know, uh, multi, just multimedia, um, you name it. We, our, our clients are always, satisfied because we are filling a need that they have now when it comes to maybe um if there's any sorts of warnings or or things that kind of are unique to maybe my particular business that i like companies to know up front um to ensure that the success of the shoot uh you know happens is i would say one would be um, just make sure, you know, everybody's got their safety equipment. We don't want to show up out there and all of a sudden people don't have enough hard hats to go around or something, right. uh, which you think would be silly, but um, things happen. And uh, the other would be, you know, make sure that your your location, your equipment is, is uh, clean or in good condition. And, and for a lot of these rental companies, um, make sure your pieces of equipment are where you think they are because – uh, stuff has a tendency to move when it has wheels on it. So, you know, a lot of it's just logistic stuff that, that um, we try and make sure is in place just to provide them the best value for, for their time. Because once we come out, um, you know, we're going to start working. And so we want, we want everything to be uh, the way it needs to be. Um, you know, another thing I'd say as far as, as, future or continued success goes is something that's unique about our business is we do rely on a lot of new customers because um, after I'm done with a shoot, I mean, we're going to do a thorough job for you and you're probably not going to need us um, to come back out again until you have a new piece of equipment or technology changes or, or something else happens. Now we do get a lot of repeat business and different um, 
like a company that we shoot equipment for might have, um, you know, a Christmas party or different events, or they might sponsor a clay shoot and they'll have us come out and, and, and photograph or document that for them. Um, so, I mean, we have a lot of repeat business that, that turns out to be um, kind of different events and functions, but, you know, we do pride ourselves on being very thorough. And so we do rely on a lot of, a lot of new uh, clients all the time. And, and in some ways we put, we put ourselves out of business uh, for about a year or so every time we're done with a company, because we really provide them everything that they, that they need for some time. Um, so just out of curiosity, because you are putting so many pictures up here and you're kind of a, you're, 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 you're capturing what they need. How long is a typical shoot lasting? Is it one day, a couple of days, or hours? How 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 long is a typical shoot? We have hourly and day rate packages, okay. and uh, right now, it's it seems like our day rates are really um, the most popular because it, it builds in the travel and it allows us to sort of work around some of these nice light opportunities of sunrise or sunset. Um, it also allows us to be flexible when equipment needs to be moved around or or something isn't quite um in place and um it also allows for multiple locations so um but you know we do hourly as well and so i'd say um our largest shoots um could go two or three days if a company wants us to wants us to go out on locations with two or three different clients that they serve and uh, the shortest is probably about a half day um you know on a single location um Maybe a few hours if the location is close. It was probably about the shortest um, that that we would have. Okay, the website again is theoilfieldphotographer.com. dot com. We will link to that in the show note. Um, James, anything else before we get out of here? Um, you know, besides the website, which we've promoted a couple times now, we're gonna link to the show notes, LinkedIn or Instagram or Twitter or Facebook, anywhere else that you might want to push people to to connect with you at. Sure. Uh, yeah, I'm on LinkedIn, um, you know, and then also we have the, we have, um, Instagram, the oil field photographer. You can't miss it. There's only one, the oil field photographer. And, um, you know, we just, we're, we're thankful for the opportunity We're we're staying incredibly busy. We, uh, if there's anything we'd, um, I guess like to say is just the, there, there's no idea that's kind of too wild. We've got all the all the best equipment, all the best people, and 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 imagination to make it happen. So we do we do anything that your company needs or is proud of, and you want to show off, we are able to do that for you. And again, the oilfieldphotographer dot com. Be sure to reach out to James and his crew to get you your pictures taken. I've I've appreciated while we sit here talking. I've just had it up on the gallery, just kind of looking at some of these pictures, and y'all have some some really really cool shots. And by the time this airs, obviously, y'all probably have some more up. So um, if you're not if you if you're if you're in doubt, just go take a look at the website because they have some really really cool shots. There is one with um, some tanks and some lightning in the background. Right, it looks like dusk, and it is it's spectacular. So you guys are doing great work. And, and as someone who appreciates the industry, it's good to see that this this is being documented and um, for folks who are outside the industry to go and um, go and see what we do. So we I appreciate that. One thing I say a lot is. Um, folks outside the industry, I think, kind of think of us as all big oil and gas, you know, you know, multi-millionaires, and it's not. It's just a lot of people like me and you, and just going out and trying to make a living. So it's good to see that that's being captured and documented for um, for folks to go and view. So thank you for that as well. Absolutely, that people are the key, and and we are we make our our pictures based on people of oil and gas. I mean, it's it's a uh, it's not like a photo of something static. We're going to be out there. We're going to be close. We're going to be um, right up with the people who make this industry, uh, go, you know, what it is. And so that's what differentiates us from maybe some other types of photographers who might, you know, be have a little more uh, artsy or sort of kind of static feel. Uh, we, we go we go and get our hands dirty, too. And, um, and we love it. Well, thank you again for coming on the show. The oilfieldphotographer.com is the website. We'll link to that in the show notes. And to the listeners, we will talk to you next week.